Welcome back. I am really excited you're here today because in today's video, we are talking once more to Dr. Nick Mohindra, who is the brilliant inventor of the Oralift, which has quickly become one of my favorite devices. Dr. Nick and I will be talking about biological aging versus chronological aging and how the Oralift doesn't just make us look younger, but can actually help improve our biological aging process. But before I forget, we will also have a Black Friday sale on the Oralift. All the details are in the description box and we'll also talk about it in the video. So without further ado, let's talk to Dr. Nick. Hello, Dr. Nick. It's really great to have you back on. It's lovely to be back, Claudia. Thank you so much for being here. I wanted to have you back on, Dr. Nick, because in the last video, we talked about my before and after pictures after wearing the oral lift for four months. And we looked at all the aesthetic changes that we saw. But today, I'd like to talk to you about these aesthetic changes that we saw do they also mean something else? In other words, does that mean that my biological age has also been affected by wearing the oral lift? Claudia, I strongly believe that it is. Uh, biological age and chronological age are two different things. I don't know whether enough has been talked about this in the media, but Biological age is very, very important. So let's talk about what is the difference between our chronological age is obviously I was born January 3rd, 1969, and that is my chronological age. But what is our biological age? What does that mean? Well, you know, when you look at people and you say, oh, you look very good for your age. Or if you go to your doctor and he's doing some tests on you and he's measuring your heart rate and things like that and he says to me oh your biological age is very good what he's meaning is that the way our cells have aged inside us can differ and that can differ because of the lifestyle we have if we smoke a lot we drink a lot we're under a lot of stress then we perhaps may age more whereas if we do the right things then our cells in our body may not age according to the chronological age we are at. So basically, if I take good care of myself, if I exercise and eat well and watch my stress, I could, though my chronological age is 52, I could technically be 35. <laughs> my that, biological is, age. that is excellent. That is, okay. in a nutshell, the truth. There's a lot of research that's been done is fasting is good for us. Mm -hmm. So is exercise, so is watching your stress, getting enough sleep. All of those things can, of course, affect our biological aging process. That's right. That's right. The, one of the things I was reading about was that walking is supposed to be very good. So exercise we think of as going to the gym, but mm -hmm. even walking every day can also stimulate certain parts of our brain and uh, is very good for us. And of course, we know what is um, detrimental to our biological aging or what speeds up biological aging. And that is things like smoking, drinking alcohol in excess, obesity, a sedentary yeah. lifestyle. Yeah. And the interesting thing is, you know, why is biological age important? Why should we mm -hmm. biologically uh, younger than our chronological age? Well, the basic thing, if your biological age is younger than your chronological age, that means you're less likely to get age-related problems. Mm -hmm. Dementia, memory loss, arthritic joints and things like that. All those will be, you'll be less likely to have them. So you'll be able to utilize yourself in a much more powerful and effective way as you get older. You'll be able to use the wisdom that you've gathered much more uh, effectively. Yeah, it's so, not necessarily just about expanding lifespan, but about quality of life as you're aging. That is, that is exactly what I was trying to say. <laughs> it's the quality of life that you'll be improving. It doesn't necessarily mean you live up to 150 or 200. I think it's the quality of life that is important. Yes. Now, you and I have talked about this oral lift possibly being one of the things we can do to improve our biological aging process. So let's talk about that. Okay. One of the things we talked about is exercise. Exercise, mm -hmm. we know, is very good for us. But oral lift is not a form of exercise. 
it's using the process of adaptation. So what do we mean by adaptation? When our body is trying to adapt, for instance, now with oral lift, the jaw has to rest in a new position. It can't rest in its old position. When the body is trying to adapt, every cell in the body has to change, has to alter and work at its best to be able to let the body adapt to this new position. And this is why we are finding there are so many other benefits being reported by using oral lift rather than just on the face. And it's interesting that you bring that up, the, the process of, of adaptation, because that comes in plain fasting, in exercise, in stress management even. Every time the body has to adjust to something either at a higher stress or lower stress is when things happen and when we can affect our biological age. That's right. I love sauna. And that again and is you know, <laughs> hot and cold. Mm -hmm. We are having to adapt to that. And that is good for us too. So the exactly. process of adaptation is very crucial in the study of uh, biological age. So talking about biological age, how do we measure? We know our chronological age. That's, that's a given. I was born January 3rd, 1969. I don't need to measure that. But how do we measure our biological age? Biological age is measured in quite a few ways. There are questionnaires about your lifestyle. You can take your blood samples and measure the aging biomarkers in your blood samples. There's also now you can get some cells and look at the genes in the cells and see how the genes have uh, changed with age. And that is a very good indication of what your biological age is then. So there are lots of ways. But the one that intrigued me most is there's a Chinese paper that was published not very long ago. And he looked at the face and studied how the face ages. And he picked up four things. How the corner of the eye slopes downwards, how our nose gets wider, mm -hmm. how the distance between the nose and the lip lengthens as we age, and the width of the smile. He found that this also widens as we age. And his conclusion was that studying the face is a better way of judging biological age than taking all these samples. Mm -hmm. And that I found very intriguing because then I started looking at all my pictures of my uh, people who have used or lift, and hey presto, yes, that's what was <laughs> happening. The eyes were lifting up, the nose was getting narrower, this distance was reducing, and the mouth was getting narrower. Well, let's, um, let's look at my before and afters one more time and let's look at these four key points and see if my biological age has actually improved. Well, according to the phenotype, the changes on your face, definitely. Your five-star result was your lips. <laughs> and we can see how the width of your lips is narrower now in the after picture than it was in the before picture. Yet my lips have gotten fuller, actually. That's I really right. like my lips now. <laughs> and I think uh, also the distance between the nose and the top of the lip has reduced. Mm -hmm. That shows in your smile also how your smile has changed. That if you look at the width of the nose, now that is slightly narrower. And also the tip has lifted up. You know, one of the things we know about, and I'm diversifying a little bit here with aging is, that ears get longer and our nose gets longer mm -hmm. as we age. And what we are finding is both these are reducing with or lift. That's amazing. The fourth item that the Chinese professor concentrates on is the slope of the eyes. So the corners of the eyes start to droop downwards as we age. This is not symmetrical. So one side can droop more than the others. And that's what we're seeing in your picture. I think it's your right eye that was drooping more and has lifted up more now in the after picture. The left one, not so much. But that lifting up of the corner of the eye, again, is an indication that according to the phenotype theory, your biological age is improving. Hmm. That's amazing. Well, I tell you, 
what I have noticed aside from the aesthetic changes. I used to, you know, I was a horrible teeth grinder and clincher. And when you and I first started working together, I told you I can never stop that. I've done this my whole life. Well, I stopped because of the oral lift. And what I've noticed, the reason why I wanted to stop the grinding and clinching is because I've ruined all my teeth. So I wanted to save my teeth. But what I've noticed is that it has affected my biological aging process in a way that it has kept down my stress level. Because when I used to get anxious, my first response subconsciously was to clench my teeth. And that, of course, then shall my breathing got more sh- caused this whole cascade of stress hormones to happen and everything else, which, of course, we know stress is horrible for biological aging. That's right. And that's- now when I find myself getting anxious, I don't do that anymore. I keep my jaw relaxed. My breathing stays relaxed because of that I don't tighten up my whole body so this whole stress response this whole cascade of cortisol increasing and adrenaline increasing doesn't happen and that right there does is going to do wonders for my biological aging because I keep my stress level down because before this tightening of the jaw signal to my body stress That's and this right. whole thing happened so that is amazing to me Exactly. I think stress is such a big part in our modern day society, you know. And I think if we were looking at 21st century diseases, stress is probably going to be, I think, the top of the list, you know. And if we can control that. But remember, it wasn't just the oral if they did it. You played a big part in it, Claudia, yourself. Definitely, but I could not control that automatic response of my jaw tightening, which then caused everything else to tighten. I was, you know, I was meditating and exercising and talking to myself to try to control the stress, but I thought I had no control over that automatic because it was something I did for so long that nice. just clenching the jaw and everything else tightens up. And it's so beautiful to not do that anymore. First of all, my face feels so much better. It is so much more relaxed. But also I can really notice how that has helped keep that anxiety at bay and it doesn't, you know, escalate because all the other things don't happen. So that right there is going to do wonders for my biological aging. Yes, we always need a little helping hand. Yes. And <laughs> is the helping hand to be able to do that, you know? It was like that little hand on the shoulder saying, it's okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, and I, another thing I want to say is that all these changes we're seeing, I, I said in the intro that this has quickly become my favorite device, and my viewers know I'm a bit of a device junkie. But all the changes we're seeing with this is from four months of wearing it. So I'm amazed by that. I did not, honestly, I did not think I would see much change from this tiny guy. But I'm seeing such incredible changes, and that is from four months of wearing it. So I'm really curious to see what's going to happen in the next four years. Well, I I think uh, the important thing is to keep using it, and I think it'll keep your biological age much younger than your chronological age. (laughs) So with further research, hopefully the thought of getting dementia one day or anything like that won't be happening for ages. But we need to do a lot more research, and that is my aim. Uh, For the next 25 years, I'd like to see a lot more research, more universities getting involved and seeing what is possible. Mm -hmm. I know that's your plan, and I really appreciate that you are putting a lot of the profits back into research because that is so important. Yes. I, I, money, what can you do with money? I mean, <laughs> you know, okay, you had gone to nice holidays, get nice clothes and whatnot. But really, at the end of the day, I'm a scientist, or I'm sort of a scientist. I was a dentist, you know, but science is at the back of my heart. And really, research is more important than anything else. Yeah. Yeah, Uh, but I can imagine, I'm sold, I mean, I'm a big believer, but I can imagine that some people are watching now, or you probably have heard this before, two people saying, listen, Dr. Nick, how can this little guy do all these different things? (laughs) What do you say to that? I mean, there are going to be skeptics. I was one of them before I actually saw the results. What are you going to say to these skeptics? Well, I remember this was in the 1980s, when I was first starting to do 
the dental facelift. That was a technique where we were increasing the height of dentures for denture patients by amounts much greater than advocated in textbooks or anything, you know. And this young dentist came to work for me and he went back to his professor and he said, uh, I'm going to work for this Nick Mahindra, you know. And he says, you're going to work for that madman he's doing things <laughs> that we tell you not to do. So it's only a question of time. You know, people are very skeptical, but there will be research done in the future. And one day this will become the norm. Mm -hmm. as, as we know exercise is good for us, oral lift is probably going to be even better than exercise. Yeah, now you're talking to a personal trainer. I don't know about that, but I think it will be just uh, as well. important. <laughs> It will be just as important. Enough research, <laughs> with enough research and knowing how to, uh, you know, to back it up. Yes. That is, uh, I think that day may come soon. Maybe wearing it while you're exercising. That would be the great, a great combination. I, as a personal <laughs> trainer, I think you should do that and see whether your performance improves when you're using the oral lift. That's a good idea. I will try that and get back to you. Yeah, that'd be interesting to hear. You know, it'll be interesting to hear. I might get some strange you're getting, looks, <laughs> you're getting benefits of exercise and benefits of oral lift yeah, together. That is true. That's the perfect combination. That's well, nice. I like I said, Dr. Nick, I am I am sold. I when I first got the oral lift, I did not honestly think it would do much other than hopefully save my teeth, but I have seen incredible benefits. And I am, like I said, I can't wait to see what the next few years are going to bring as far as benefits. And I'm I, sure you'll be pleased. I thank you so much for, first of all, inventing this and all the research you're putting in. And I know you're continuing to do research and it'll be really interesting to hear what that research shows. It's been lovely talking to you, Claudia. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nick. Is there anything else you want to add? Oh, wait, Dr. Nick, we have to talk about the Black Friday sale. <laughs> That's what we have to add. Right. So you are going to have a Black Friday sale on your website. It's going to be 15% off the oral lift. That's right? right. That's right. But then people can use my coupon on top of it, which is Claudia10, I believe. I'll link it in the description box, which gives them 25% off the oral lift. I think it's Claudia Glows 10. Claudia Glows 10, thank you. That's right. So that makes it 25% off the oral lift, which is exactly. amazing. Exactly, correct. And the sale is from the 25th of November to the 30th. That is right. Correct? That's correct. Good. That's correct. Good. I will link all the, the information down in the description box. All but right. that's, a, that's a really great deal. Thank you so much for, for doing that for us. You're welcome, Claudia. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Nick. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Always a pleasure to talk to you, Claudia.